Hey there, welcome back to the workshop and thanks for clicking on another video of mine. Unless it's your first time here, in which case, I'd love if you hit that little subscribe button. Today we're here in the workshop with a knife sheath from our friend Wayne. Now this was sent in to be repaired. And there are a couple of questions that I ask whenever I get a request like that. We'll discuss that, how we can repair the sheath and how we can maintain our leather work going forward. Let's have a look at this knife sheath right here. This is one, this is a knife I actually built for myself several years ago now and I really love it. But let's have a look how that sheath has aged. The stitching is still in, in flawless condition. Everything is nice and tight and organized because we keep it oiled and nourished. And unless it's really worn really hard, this belt loop here will probably never give way as long as we keep that oil nourished, the, the, the leather nourished. That's very key. Let's have a look. It's a pukul style blade. Did a rat tail tang there. Peen, leather stack handle. Look at the profile. I did a red and white stack there. Represent our Canadian flag. You see I did a forge finished blade and we did some vine work engraving. Just really, really love this knife. But this sheath will hold up a very, very long time because I use good quality leather. Thick, heavy leather. Look at the gauge of that leather there. And I take care of my leather because as a natural material, it will dry and wither and break down if not taken care of. But look at that luster there. Now let's have a look at our subject here for today. This is a beautiful sheath was sent in by a client of mine. But look at the issue we have here. Let's take a look at how this was designed. Let's, you see we have the whole back plate. This entire back plate of the sheath runs up. And this was a continuous loop, single piece of leather. Comes back and tucks inside the welt here. Notice how this is swelled out here. And then it's stitched in. So when a customer asks me to repair something like this, the, the idea or the question to ask is how much money do you want to spend? We could replace this entire back plate, which would mean disassembling the entirety of the sheath. We'd cut out all the stitching. We'd put in a full new piece of leather exactly the way it's designed here. Reattach our strap here because we'd lose that as well, of course. That's one way of doing it. I have a different way. But let's look at first what might cause an issue like this. First off, look at the weight of the leather. Leather is discussed in weight, in ounces. Notice the thickness there. So this is, uh, I believe, roughly a six, seven ounce leather. This is probably like a four ounce leather here. So fairly thin, which is fine. This is a, this is a commonly used grade leather for like production knife sheaths and stuff. This is, a, this is a high stress point anyway. So this type, of, this type of break is not uncommon. I've seen this plenty. So we're not gonna overthink this repair. We're gonna keep it very economical for the customer. A repair that just makes sense. Look at what we just did there. Let's get a nice hunk of leather here. this some nice thick leather have a look at that Isn't that beautiful let's make sure we get a little dye in the hard to reach areas before we can't get there anymore that bottom inside edge just like that now this glue is not really doing much other than keeping everything together while we do the next step. So we don't need this glue to be the ultimate hold. Should be set up enough. Let's get those clamps off. Trim our excess. Now one of my pet peeves is seeing leather work with edges that aren't nice and crisp and flush, you could go ahead and leave it at that. I've seen lots of makers do that, but I need that to be perfectly flush. We're gonna take over to belt sander. You can do this with a knife or with chisels, sandpaper, take your time, but I have access to a knife maker's belt grinder because I am a knife maker, so we're gonna take advantage of that.
Now we have kind of a blunted or rough nose here on the sheath, I notice as well. I'll go ahead and clean that up on my belt sander. We'll re-dye these edges that have gone kind of light here. Just clean that up, go the extra step. Okay, let's throw a stitch groove in here. And because of its location, we're going to double stitch. Stitch groover. When it's needed, we'll use this as an overstitch wheel to depress or indent those stitching lines. See with this leather, the type of surface it has, it's almost like it's a coated surface. And the, the drill bit draws those fibers up out of there and makes an ugly surface. Now what we do here by carving these grooves and punching these holes, mainly the grooves, is we sit the stitch beneath the surface. Have a look at one of my own sheaths here. This stitching is actually below the surface of the leather, so over time it will last a lot longer because it's protected by the surface. I can't really feel that stitch there. When you look at the way this stitch is put in, and this would have been put in with like a factory, like a, a stitching machine. These stitches aren't in a groove, they're sitting on the surface. So I can hook, you see that? I can hook that right there now. I could take a, a pocket knife and, and run right under there, because the stitches are above the leather surface. Again, there are many, many ways to do work like this. I am not saying that my ways are the only ways or the best ways to do things. I'm merely pointing out some of the problems that I regularly see and how I believe we can address those issues or, or uh, stay away from those issues. You can see the very nice finish there. And we filed these edges down a little bit, so let's go ahead and just re-blacken them so they look nice and natural. Kind of see that chalky dryness up here. You see we're scuffing through. The owner has worn through pretty much the, the factory dye on the tip there. So we'll repair that. And if you have leather sheaths of your own, it's a nice idea to, to pick up some dye or some polish, some different treatments like that. So that you can, if you have a problem with them, maybe some of you just don't care, or maybe you even prefer that uh, that worn finish over time. But if you don't, it's a nice idea to pick up some dye and you can keep those touch-ups done yourself. Today we're going to choose to run a saddle stitch. There are a number of ways we can finish this raw edge today. I'm going to use a little bit of beeswax. 
Actually, we'll just do in all the edges of the sheath because remember we added that fresh little bit of dye there so we'll add a bit of beeswax to all the edges and beeswax is a great way to seal great natural way to seal in the edges of your leather sheath because the, the the edges are the most sensitive to moisture uptake so you just want to scrub it down with some beeswax like that then get yourself a piece of like craft dowel like wood dowel the stuff you can get at any hardware store or you can get it at uh, dollar stores or anything like that. And just with a natural finish, just use a little bit of scrubbing like that and the, 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 the wood grain structure in itself is enough friction that it just burnishes those edges, edges in nicely. We'll work around the kind of on a 45 degree, work on that flat edge. And you can do this for quite some time if you want to have just uh, a flawless looking edge. I'll treat this one with a little mink oil before I send it back. And the leather will like that. It also means we'll send back a very beautiful finished sheath to our client. The clients are as happy as can be. And mink oil is a product that I really like. It's a great top coat to give resistance to the elements. Just provides a very like a, a hydrophobic film over the top. You can just work this in with your hands. The, the friction and warmth from your hands helps just kind of burnish that into the leather. And then to get it down into some of the, some of the pores, just like a boot shine brush. Give it a good scrub. We'll work it down into the stitching holes. And the last little wipe down just to get rid of any excess there. And we'll take a look. And there's our sheath. Notice the richness and luster to the finish there now with that mink oil. Those edges that we resurfaced there, ground in, treated them with that beeswax. Do you see that? That tip there that was all mashed down and starting to fray out. But then the main fix that we needed to do was up here. And have a look at that work. And of course with the way this is designed, this will be probably stronger than ever now that we did that fix. And without costing the client much money at all, we have his, uh, his beloved sheath back in tip-top shape, functioning perfectly and treated well. Take care of your leather work and it'll take care of you when you're out in the backcountry, out in the woods hiking. You don't have those belt straps breaking and, and your retention strap, straps breaking and your stitch delaminating and your knife falling out to the bottom. You don't want any of that. So take care of it, oil it, um, send it to someone like me if you want to, if you see your stitching is breaking down, you don't want to tackle it yourself. Before you lose that precious knife out in the woods somewhere, get it taken care of and fixed up so you'll have your, your precious items for, for many years, hopefully decades to come. Thanks so much for watching. Hit that like button if you would. Share. That's the biggest way you can help this video. Help me and my channel and help me to give back to you guys. Subscribe again if it's your first time here. I hope to see you in the next video.